my fellow freedom lovers, sovereign thinkers, thank you for tuning in to the LL3 Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful Swampy Mango, South Florida, and today's date is Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021. Yeah, it's nice and chilly out there for South Floridians. I love it. <laughs> I'm still wearing my shorts, too. They're like, you're nuts! Like, hey, I lived here for 43 years, it's in the blood. Oh, well, that's how it goes. But um, hopefully everyone around the world, the northern states and all that, Canada, etc. Hopefully those areas are um, warm. The people in the southern hemisphere probably hitting the beaches. Hopefully folks out there are being safe. Just a lot of uh, crazy insanity as usual. I know I repeat myself, but I, like, I get these uh, texting and so forth and... Um, which is good because it gets me motivated and share my input on you and you guys. So um, that's why it's like a whole thing as a team effort on countering globalism, domination, tyranny of all walks of life. But um, all right, so enough of that. I'm going to be actually talking about a uh, treasonous bill. I could say treasonous bill. Pertaining to their right to keep bear arms, breaching the U.S. Constitution, including our Bill of Rights here in the United States of America as a constitutional republic, not a corporation. That's right. But, you know, you got the numb nuts up there. Believe they're smarter than everybody else. I'd like to thank um, Zero Hedge for sharing this. And um, Mike Snyder actually wrote this from the end of the American Dream.com. Him and I have Facebook pen pals, and we share information. I'm just wondering if you got barred from Twitter yet, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm wondering too, Mr. Snyder. We're going to be blackballed. Yeah, who the heck, who the heck cares? We got plenty of places to go. So, um, oh yeah, another one too. Jeff Bezos um, has uh, resigned from CEO. Hmm. I'm just wondering. If he, I know he still has stocks in that company, so think about that, right? See what kind of technocratic platform he has in mind. But, um, all right, so this one here, written by Mr. Snyder, came out a couple of days ago. H.R. 127, a new bill in Congress would literally end your Second Amendment rights permanently. All right, so we have to say it about this. If a new bill has been, if a new bill has been introduced in Congress, eventually becomes law, the Second Amendment will still be in the U.S. Constitution, but for all practical purposes, the rights that's supposed to guarantee would be dead and gone. H.R. 127 submitted on January 4th, and if you have not read it, you can find the full text right here. There's a link for that. So, um, I recommend I encourage everyone to check it out. It contains a lot of technical language, language, and so in this article, I'm going to try to break it, break down what it means very simply. Now that the Democrats control the White House, the Senate, and the House of Representatives, there is going to be a major push to ram through some form of gun control legislation. If it's not this bill, will be another one. So we need to be diligent. One of the biggest things in, that H.R. 127 would do is that it would create a national firearms registration system that would literally be accessible by anyone. Do we say peeping toms, everyone? Big brother, big sister, all hail to the technocrats and their minions. Man, Mao will be Mao, Hitler, Stalin. They will be all climaxing in their graves, including Pol Pot. They will be manifesting with lust, okay? Yeah, so I'm not afraid to say that to anybody, and I don't give a damn, including... Not even being a limit to all you communist sympathizers out there. Yeah, I, 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 if I offend you too, good, because you deserve to be called out. This is what it has to say here. H.R. 127 established a federal firearms registration system that will be accessible by federal, state, and local governments, including the military, even the general public. The system will track the make, model, and serial number of all firearms, their owners, the dates they were required, and where... They are being stored. I think his name is uh, Sheila Jackson Lee, congresswoman from Texas. Huh, yeah, she probably she probably has a she probably is a member of the Church of Jim Crow, right? <laughs> Jim Crow. I'm a Jim Cronyist. <laughs> Jim Cronyism. Yeah, that's it. Jim Cronyism Jackson. Yeah, 
and, oh, but I'm a black woman, so what? You still have those attributes, honey, so deep down inside, you know I'm right. I love being sarcastic once in a while because people need that inspiration. So we'll continue on here. So if your neighbor, neighbor, a co-worker, or someone that just wants to rob your home, want to know where you were armed, how you were armed, all they would have to do would be to look up in the firearms registration system. This bill will also apply retroactively. Within three months, you would have to report to the government where you bought all of your guns, when they were purchased, and when, where they are currently being stored. Needless to say, if the government knows where all your guns are being stored, it will make them much easier to grab them from you and some future or at some future date. H.R. 127 would also require all gun owners be federally licensed. And I got some jerk-offs down here to support that. Yep, a bunch of a bunch of Jim Crowaholics. Yeah, that's right. They done it to the black people a long time ago, licensing them. All right, just look up that video, No Guns for Negroes, from Jews for the Preservation of Farms Ownership. It's a 20, over 20-minute 20 documentary. has a lot of facts. These knuckleheads... I try to tell them that they just walk away because they know I'm right. They can't argue the they can't argue the person who has um, a lot of knowledge in this area. Remember, if you argue with the fool, you're just blowing you're just blowing your own hot air. So I'm gonna keep on going here. That would mean that a gun owning a gun would no longer be a right. Instead, it will be reduced to a privilege that the government could take away at any time. According to the bill, the licensing procedure would would include a psychological evaluation. The licensing requirement mandates that a licensed applicant undergoes a criminal background check and then submits to a psychological evaluation to determine, sorry, to determine whether the person is psychologically unsuited to possess a firearm. Successful licensees must show they have an insurance policy which will cost $800. So can we say Involuntary servitude, the 13th Amendment, damn straight. We can use the 8th too. All right, so I'm gonna, I will talk about that in a little bit. I know a lot of guys out there that would definitely not want to go through any sort of psychological evaluation, but a government approved psychologist, and it wouldn't be just for you that will get interviewed. According to the bills, spouses and other family members will be interviewed as well. For the psychological evaluation, a licensed psychologist will interview individuals, spouses, and at least two other family members or associates to further determine the state of the mental emotion and re relation, relational sub stability of the individual in relation to firearms. Licenses will be denied to individuals hospitalized for issues such as depressive episodes. No duration for a license disability is specified, and it does not matter whether the individual sought help voluntarily. The goal, of course, is to make owning guns as difficult as possible. Democrats figure that if they could put it up as many barriers to gun ownership as possible, a lot less people will end up owning them. Thirdly, the bill will also greatly restrict type of ammunition that you can own. Finally, H.R. 127 also criminalizes the possession of large-capacity magazines, those carrying greater than 10 rounds, and ammunition that is 50 caliber or greater. I know that, that all of this sounds utterly ridiculous, but the restrictions in this bill actually sound very, very similar to what Joe Biden has been publicly proposing. During the 2020 campaign, Joe Biden promised a long list of gun control regulations. There is a reason that Michael Bloomberg spent $125 million helping Biden in Florida and something over $600 million nationally in the general election. You know how much money, campaign money, went to Joe Biden? A little over $1 billion. Okay? That's according to OpenSecrets.org. And Donald Trump got like a little under $800 million. Don't go think about that. All right, so I'm just letting you folks know. It's one big Ponzi scheme, you know? This agenda includes classifying many semi-auto rifles and magazines holding more than 10 bullets as Class 3 weapons, which can acquire nine months for more 
approval and a $200 fee, national gun licensing, red flag laws, and let judges take away people's guns without a hearing. Background checks on a private transfer of guns and bans on some semi-automatic firearms that happen to look like military weapons. Gun control is very high on the list of things that Joe Biden wants to get accomplished during the next four years. <clears throat> so, like I said, if it isn't this bill, it will be another one that is similar. They are coming for your Second Amendment. They are going. They aren't going to stop until they get what they want. Meanwhile, this all happened at a time when murder rates across America are going through the roof. Homicide rates were higher during every month of 2020 relative to rates from the previous year. The report state calling 30% surge and large a troubling increase that has no modern precedent. So they're going to use this as an excuse, folks. What happened last year with the COVID-19, so-called COVID-19 lockdown. Remember, folks, it's another 24-hour, 24-7 excuse for everything, okay? Just like 9-11. Think about that, okay? We have, we have never been seen major city murder rates jump by an average of 30% in a single year. Things are getting really crazy out there, and many believe that 2021 will be even worse. For almost a year, there has been civil unrest in our cities on an almost nightly basis. I write this. Civil unrest has erupted in Rochester, New York. We live in a time when rioting, looting, arson, and vandalism have become commonplace. And the senseless violence that we have witnessed so far is just the leading edge of the storm. And it's wondering, is it actually been financed? Okay? Is this done by design? you got to question these things, folks. Millions of Americans can see what is happening to our society, and they are quite concerned. 2020 was a record year for gun sales in the United States, and dealers have reported that demand is extremely strong so far in 2021 as well. The Democrats do not like this one bit, and they're going to do the very best to put a stop to it. Please let your friends, family, and contacts know about H.O. 127 because an all-out attack on the Second Amendment is coming. But at this point, most people are not even aware this is about to happen. And he's absolutely correct. You got a lot of folks out there are just totally insane, all right? And he, I could tell you this for sure. What they're doing... It's considered treasonous. All right? It is a treasonous referendum for sure. 100%. No ends, ifs, or buts. There's no such thing as good government. Even when the United States of America became a constitutional republic. Even before that. Through the Articles of Confederation. Pastor Henry Warren made that statement about what is a good government. And even George Washington, the founding fathers, okay, either ones who even Jefferson wrote in his Declaration of Independence, the main objective, you never trust us, period. And that's our heritage, folks. Without a doubt. That's in our gene pool. Deal with it. Implement it. Spread that torch of truth to everyone you know. And what's interesting, because if you look at some of the stuff in the Constitution. Let me go with Article 1, Section 8. Clause 18, which is the very bottom here. To make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foregoing powers and all the powers vested by this Constitution in the government of the United States or in any department of officers thereof. This is, not a this is unnecessary. They're trying to do. Okay? Unnecessary. If we hit section 9, clause 3, no bill of attainder or ex post facto law shall be passed. All right? HR 127, red flag laws, for an example, is considered a bill of attainder. These are illegal laws. All right? And we can hit number 4, of course. No capitation or other direct tax shall be laid unless a portion of the census to the census or enumeration hearing before directed to be taken. There's no there's no there's nothing direct about that. 
And we can hit eight. No time, no bill shall be granted by the United States, and no person holding any office of profit or trust under them shall, or not to consider Congress, except any present, a moment, office, or title of any kind, whatever, from any king, prince, or sovereign state. <laughs> so we do have an invalid government right now. It's oh so obvious, it's stripped naked. Let me get hit Article 6, Section 2. Or Article 6, Section 2, right? Yeah, I'm on my phone, folks. The Constitution and the laws of the United States shall be made in prudence thereof, and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land. Okay, so this law, this bill, it's invalid. I can go on here about judges and all that, but you can... um. Look at that yourself, right? And the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. What the heck? Why not? Anything in the Constitution or laws of, or any state to the contrary notwithstanding. Of course, you'll have an oath as well on Section 3 of this article. And of course, we got the Second Amendment. Well, regular militia being necessary to secure a free state, the right of the people shall keep bear arms shall not be infringed. Let me hit the fourth. The rights of the people to be secured in their persons, houses, papers, and effects. You gotta have a valid warrant. I'm just paraphrasing. And of course, fifth, incriminating yourselves. And you got everything gotta be done with due process. And without it's gotta be done everything gotta be done with due with, with due process. And you have to be compensated. They don't want that, they just want to take it. Alright? Of course, we can use the seventh because sometimes the red flag laws are uh, lawsuits, civil civil suits. In suits of common law with a value of controversy shall exceed twenty dollars, the right of fair trial by jury shall be reserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise reexamined in any courts of the United States than according to the rules of common law. So you, you can have your have to have a jury of your peers too. See, that's why the, when they did the, when they did the red flag law in Florida, I told everyone it was null and void from the beginning. You got those dip craps, including flip flop Rick Scott, signed it. You think I have con you think I have love for him? No, I'm not impressed by that man, because he's not a freedom loving guy. He's just a yappa. Even as governor, I didn't even vote for the man. I didn't even vote for. I didn't even support him as a senator because he was challenging his twin brother Bill Nelson. For goodness sakes, just to let you folks know. Hey, I did a road writing vote, David Weeks. I voted for him. End of story. And of course, the Eighth Amendment, ex ex excessive shall not be required, nor excessive fines be imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishment inflicted. Of course, you got the enumeration of this Constitution, the Ninth Amendment. Enumeration of this Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny, disparage, or others retained by the people. And we got the Tenth, the Tenth, the Tenth Amendment. We can use that nullification. We can tell them is null and void. Good, here you go. The power is not delegated to the United States by, by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectfully or to the people. So right there. It's null and void. The states can say no. The locals can say no. Remember the Patriot Act? Yeah. They, we can treat, treat it the same way, folks. Don't hesitate here. And, of course, 13th Amendment. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except for punishment of a crime whereof the party shall be duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. They can't just take your farms away. Or, or give you, you know, heavy taxes and all that too. So, 13th Amendment, involuntary servitude. And of course, the 14th. You know, I'm not, I'll just do the first sentence though. All persons neutral are, are born naturalized in the United States. And subject to jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the states within where they reside. So immunities and all that, you can use that as well. And of course, it says here, I'll, I'll, just, I'll do the whole thing. What the heck? No state shall make or enforce any law shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor 
deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. So, and we can get them here on number three. So, two and three. And of course, section five, the Congress shall have the power to enforce by appropriate legislation the provisions of this article. And they're not doing that. So, it is invalid. And one of the things you folks can use too against them. Give your adversary, give your opposition a taste of their own medicine. Roe v. Wade. The case itself is not mainly about abortion, which in good faith, I'm personally against it. Okay? On a consensual basis, we gotta be sexual we gotta be responsible for our actions. However, this case goes bigger than that. It, rep- it, re- it relates to the right of privacy of a person. And that's why some people freak out when I share this. They get offended when it comes to licensing farms and all that. And they, I go, no, you got to really read this thing. Because the opposition hates it when you throw it back at them. So I'm definitely going to leave the links here on the Constitution and the case of Roe v. Wade. You can make your own judgment. Because she used, uh, they, they ruled her in her favor too under the 9th and 14th Amendments of the U.S. Constitution and the 5th and the 4th. So, um, 1st, 4th, 5th, 9th, and 14th. And it's very similar. This case can is, is relevant to H.R. 127. My friend, that's how you play their game. I know that for a fact. I've done stuff that drove them crazy. Doesn't matter if it's federal, state, or local. You gotta get them to think. Bottom line is, it's invalid, period. Anyone support this? You ask him, who are your role models? Mao Tse Sung, Chiang Kai shek, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stotland, Pol Pot, Idi Amin, etc. Ask them, who are your role models? If they don't like that answer, good. Because they emulate the ones they despise. That's how you get them, folks. Art of War 101. No exceptions. These parasites in D.C. think they're above everybody. They're not. They are nothing but a bunch of pretentious cockroaches. They're so out of touch is insane. We need, actually, we need to ridicule them, ignore them and ridicule them. Post them Pull some tyrants they emulate on these bills. I do it. They get, if, I, if they get offended, who the hell cares? Because they deserve to be insulted because they're trying to do it on us. Remember, they like to they like to emulate they like to um utilize uh these uh oppressive practices. You treat them the same way. They're criminals. They love to commit the crime, but they hate reprisals. And that will be it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you say something that's interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please share your correspondence in the quorum. Furthermore, I'll leave the footnotes of these um of this article and the Constitution of Roe v. Wade on my speaker page. And if you want to contact me, you can hit me at LokiLuck03 at ProtonMail.com. Or, if you want to donate, you can hit me at PayPal.me or Cash.app forward slash LokiLuck3. Support Michael Snyder. End of America. End of the American Dream.com. If you have a donation, 
support this gentleman as well. And of course, all other alternative media sites because, hey, we're all fighting for the same cause. Supporting our natural born rights. And preserving liberty. Which is freedom plus morality. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the demoniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.